What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W. And today I'm going to go over yesterday's day trading recap. Check it out. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on into this. Um, yesterday's trade of the day was RKDA. <clears throat> and sadly, I missed pretty much all of it. Um, I have not been focused on trading stocks over the last couple weeks because I've been trading options primarily because small caps haven't been moving around enough. And I've lost focus on, you know, the actual stocks themselves. And I'm not, you know, mad at myself about it or anything like that because, well, they just weren't moving. Small caps were not moving. And there was much more opportunities over, you know, trading options on the SPY, BYND, etc. And that's where I've been making my money. So um, I saw RKDA was making some moves in pre-market yesterday, but I honestly did not focus on it at all. I don't even remember if I put it on my watch list. All I know is I saw it making moves, but I was looking at BYND. I was looking at the SPY. Um, I didn't pay attention to RKDA. When the bell rang, it sold off. Uh, then I saw I saw that it was kind of setting up like a double bottom, but I honestly had no expectations of it making a move because well, I haven't seen anything do that for the last two weeks. So what were the chances of going after it and it making a move? Eh, maybe 50-50. I don't really like putting myself in 50-50 you know, positions. Uh, even though yesterday, uh, you know, while I traded this, I did put myself on my first trade in a 50-50 position. And that was just a straight formal play. And we're going to go over that. I have live trades here for you. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over a mental lesson. But I need you to do me a quick favor and that smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> so we can get this. Uh, take a look at the at the 15 minute chart. You can see. <clears throat> exactly what RKDA did yesterday. It was very wicky, uh, both on top and on the bottom. So there was a lot of selling pressure, but a lot of buying pressure. So that was indicative of shorts getting trapped, uh, as well as longs getting trapped. And, uh, you know, this thing was going to go big one way or the other. And, well, it went big to the upside. Um, here we see where this is a 15 minute chart, okay, where RKDA sold off at the open and found support down here and this 260 270 area now what i want you to notice i just drew this line right now as i was studying the chart is that that area um how can we do this okay there we go that area would be down here can you see it no you cannot yeah you can wait why isn't it not showing up there we go. Okay, that area would be down here. <clears throat> and it's kind of like this little bounce area on the daily. But it's not a lot. This is one, two, three, four days of bouncing there uh, before it failed on through it. And it's not like we came back up here to retest it. We just basically gapped up over it and held it. So then if you go back a little bit at the beginning of the year, it's another bounce area here. And that's about it. It's really not you know, a significant point on the chart other than those two spots. So I don't know that I would have played it there. I don't, I don't think I would have because what happens is we sell off at the open and we start to hold that area. We start to hold it and hold it. And then we start to squeeze up. Maybe I would have gotten in uh, for a break and hold of this three real quickly on volume with a small position. I don't know if I would have added to it. I don't know. I wasn't looking at the chart. <clears throat> I wasn't looking at the level two. I wasn't looking at anything regarding this. So I really don't know how I would have played it as far as uh, adding, you know, my take profit area, etc. cetera. Uh, just because I wouldn't have thought of this area maybe. I don't think I would have, I really don't. I wanna say that I would have taken a starter here with the stop right underneath uh, 265, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't say with certainty. However, I once it got halted, obviously it came to my attention. I pulled up the chart and then I said to myself, if the halt price holds, it would be a good place to get long in front of. And that's exactly what happens. But 
I did not get long out of the halt when it held that 350 area. Didn't do it. I I fight myself on that because oftentimes if it it might hold it for a split second and then boom, dip right underneath it a solid 20, 30 cents. And then, you know, you're stuck in there in a sense uh, on a nasty little red, red trade. I would have preferred it to have held it, popped a little bit, came back down and kind of held it for like a couple minutes. Well, a couple minutes, I mean like six minutes, 10 minutes of consolidation and then gone. But it doesn't do that. Look what it does. It it holds this area, pops up, makes a new high, comes right back down, tests it again. And, and on that one, I thought about jumping in. But this super wick here made me think that eh, this might not be a good idea because look at that wick. Lots of selling pressure. So I didn't bite, you know, the bait here in the 260s with a stop underneath 250. Didn't do it. That was a mistake because then look, all the way to 450. So now you understand, emotionally, I'm here like, damn it, I didn't buy this and it moved. Damn it, I didn't buy this dip and it moved all the way back to 450. That's a dollar move. I would have gotten in there at, at 460 and sold, you know, some up here in the 430s, 440s, 450s. Uh, that's almost a dollar move. That's 70, 80, 90 cents. Held on to a piece looking for a $5 test. That's a trade. That's that's how I like to trade. But I didn't take that. So the level of frustration and FOMO that I'm experiencing at that moment that I'm fighting against is huge. And this is why I felt so tired yesterday. And if you follow me on Twitter, you would know that I tweeted at the end of the day. I feel like I, I traded like a madman today and made $5,000, but I only took two trades and I might break even on the day. Like exactly like I broke even. Okay. I lost 80 bucks and then I made 80 bucks and then I shut it down at the end of the day. And and I didn't take that last trade until the end of the day. Like I stayed watching RKDA all day long, looking for an opportunity that I can get in there and make some money. And that's why I was so tired. I was so tired because I had to fight my emotions all day long. So I missed this. Well, first of all, I missed one of my favorite setups, okay? This double bottom. Then I missed this hold of 350. Then I missed this dip back down to 350, which is the halt price. It's in front of the previous morning high up here in the 340s. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I just woke up basically a little while ago, Saturday morning, and I wanted to shoot this video. So, okay, so I missed this. I missed this. I missed this dip. Okay, now I'm watching and watching and watching and watching and I'm still watching. Okay, I'm sorry. I take this dip here, this dip here into the 90 MA and $4. I buy that dip. Okay. And I see that we're holding $4 and I'm thinking, okay, good. If we can hold this 90 MA, which proved to be support here, proved to be support here. Okay. And now the 90 MA is right here in this $4 area. Hold dollar plus 90 MA. Okay. There was a little pivot point resistance here. If we can hold this, we squeeze, we go to 450, five bucks. That's my thought process. I think it was, I think it was a sound plan. I think it was reasonable, but I did enter it on a bit of a FOMO feeling. So I entered it here at 409 and I held through this and this, and then I got stopped out on this candle, small $80 loss. Okay. I didn't even, I don't even click record I don't think I don't know I'll check um, but I, I sold out here on this candle lost 80 bucks okay only for it to come down here and make a low of 385 and then rip right back up to the 430s but then right back down so it's very choppy so now I'm watching this all day long I'm not trading it we have that nasty little dip here all the way down to VWAP okay I want you to make note of that VWAP we're setting a pivot here in these 440s, 430s, VWAP support. We're creeping into lunchtime. I'm not trading lunch. Generally very low volume time. Now we push during lunch and make a new high. I hated that. Pulled back in. We're still holding above VWAP. It has not come back down to VWAP itself, but it's holding this $4 area. Are you seeing this? Look at this pivot here. Holding it, holding it, holding it. 
Then we're coming out of lunch. We make a push back up, make another new high, 490. <clears throat> I did not buy any of these dips. Not even this one, which had me extremely tempted because look at that candle. Dip all from 430, 440, all the way to $4 and got bought right back up. Why didn't I buy it? Because I wanted VWAP to climb up closer to that $4 area before I bought in front of $4. I like to buy in front of multiple support indicators, not just one. $4 is a price that's showing support, but there's nothing else there. I don't have VWAP. I don't have like a previous chart level, nothing. Because the previous chart level uh, on the gap entry is right here, and that's like at over 410. So $4 is underneath the gap. <clears throat> so I'm waiting for this VWAP to climb up there. But it's not climbing up there just yet. And then we go and we make a new high all the way up here, 490, 498, five bucks. And then we set that doji. See that doji? Boom, we set that doji. And then we start to dip back down. Now, here comes my trade. Like I'm telling you, I stocked this all the way to the end of the day. This is already 3.45 p.m. We get this dip. And another dip down to where did I want to buy? That $4 area with VWAP there. We dip to $4. VWAP is climbing up there. VWAP is at $3.93. I get long right in there, $4.09. Small size because it's the end of the day. We're showing a little bit of weakness. Although we're, we are bouncing of, 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 up off of VWAP. So I just take 400 shares there. And I'm thinking to myself, we can get a quick 50 cent bounce. You know, I'm in the money. I'm happy and uh good day and we do get just that but it wasn't easy it was a little bit of a grinder so i took some prop i got in at 409 i took some profit off at 425 and then i took the rest of the profit off at 440. it continued to squeeze in after hours uh closer to five bucks again we closed you know we went all the way up here to 469 so it would have been a real nice trade had i held on to it a little bit longer and i do have that trade here for you let me see if I have the other one, too. <clears throat> I think I do. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is the first trade, RKDA, and 500 shares. Like a starter, I was thinking to add. We're holding that area there at four dollars, so I'm happy. You know, the 90 MA is there. Up a couple bucks. We're still holding, making a higher low. So I'm thinking, okay, this is not bad at all. We're consolidating sideways on light, lighter volume, making a higher low. This is good. Making another higher low as the candle opens. All right, you know, I'm thinking this is good. This is good. And then boom, look at that crash. Look at that. It's like, it, I knew it. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. I read this perfectly now that I remember because my stop was a little bit deeper, okay? And when we pushed on this little pivot here and made like a new high in this consolidation area, I read that as bearish when it dipped immediately back down and I just marked it out of the position. Check it out. We push, push, watch, watch this candle. We push, push, push. Oh, wait, you got to rewind it a little bit. There it is. Okay, so we open up the candle. Lots of green on the tape. We push, push, push. There's the push. Lots of green on the tape. Lots of green on the tape. Pushing immediately. We start seeing more red, more red, more red. Look at all that red. And we're dipping back down. I immediately start to get ready to mark it out. Mark it out as soon as we broke $4. You have to be able to read everything when you're in your trade. <clears throat> so that was my loss there. And then in the afternoon, right? Well, power hour, right? Right before the close, I was expecting shorts to cover some of their positions right before the close. They don't want to hold on to this over the weekend. We have the dip that I told you about onto VWAP. I'm in 400 shares. 409 was my entry. Cost basis 411 with commissions. And then I'm looking for it to continue moving up. Right around here, I take half off, 200 shares, sold right there, 409 to 425. 
and then I sold the rest right there at 440. I really should have held on to that for that 450, 460 area. But I figured I'm already right on the day. I'm going to be extra conservative. And that trade alone <coughs> got me back to exactly break even. So it's like I worked all day yesterday uh, to do nothing <laughs> in essence. But I am happy that I did not oversize on my second trade, that I did not FOMO into any breakouts, that I did not do anything stupid, and I was able to keep my head, my composure, and finish the day at break even versus red, how I was, horribly red, had I let my emotions take control of me, or, you know, just left it at that and just got it mad and closed it all, all out and not done anything. Instead, I focused, I stayed, I waited, I stalked, I saw my opportunity, jumped in, jumped out, and washed out the day, all right? Monday's another day. Let me know how you did. Drop it in the comment section below. Remember to smash that like button for me. It really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't, subscribe. And if you have, thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one.